and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I am a chemist who loves makeup. I thought it would be interesting to talk about the woman who we recently came to find out substituted Gorilla Glue for her normal hairspray. If you clicked on this video, I'm sure you already know the story behind that. So we're not going to dive deep into that, but she did manage to get it removed by a doctor from Los Angeles. So I would like to give some insight on what happened from my perspective as a chemist and also kind of discuss some of the problems that can arise when you use products that aren't intended for cosmetic use as cosmetics. So there is a lot of methods that she tried that other people suggested that was not getting this Gorilla Glue out of her hair. To talk about why this wasn't getting out of her hair, let's look at what is in this adhesive spray from Gorilla Glue that she used on her hair. For any sort of household product like this adhesive, cleaning materials, that kind of thing, to figure out what's in them, if it's not listed on the bottle, you're going to look up what is referred to as an SDS. An SDS is a safety data sheet, previously known as a material safety data sheet. Some of the info that is on an SDS is what first aid measures to take if you are exposed, what kind of equipment to use, the components of it, and a lot of other safety info which may not be useful to consumers but is helpful from an industry standpoint. So let's look at section three here for the composition of this Gorilla Glue adhesive. So one of the ingredients in here that is not a solvent is gonna be this polyhydrocarbon resin polyurethane. And if you look here, you'll see it says the CAS number is proprietary, so they don't have a CAS number. Every sort of compound that exists out there for the most part, generally speaking, like as a molecule, has a CAS number. This CAS number can be used to go find more information about that particular chemical, but in this case, it doesn't have one because this is a polymer. I guess they can say it's proprietary so they don't have to tell you. Overall, this is what is making this Gorilla Glue work. This resin is what forms to have those adhesive properties of the Gorilla Glue. When all the solvents evaporate and this is allowed to sit and harden and set, that is what is forming this adhesive and that is what is stuck in her hair. So there's a lot of other compounds in here. There's propane and butane. That's what's gonna act as the propellant in this case. There's methyl acetate, there's as well as cyclohexane, dimethyl ether. So there are a lot of solvents in here. And the most familiar solvents that are in here are methyl acetate and acetone. These are also found in nail polish removers. So we know what this is dissolved in, so that also kind of helps us figure out what to use to remove this from our head. So let's go through the methods of what she had tried. So the first thing was she tried washing her hair. This isn't gonna work. If we look on that SDS sheet, there is no water listed. Nothing in there is soluble in water because if it was, they would just use water because that's gonna be one of the cheaper solvents. And so it's unlikely that this would dissolve in water. Even with soap, the soap is not gonna be a strong enough of a surfactant to start breaking down that material. Next, a lot of people suggested acetone. That is very reasonable to suggest because some of the solvent was acetone and methyl acetate, which are kind of similar in nature. And acetone is probably the most effective solvent that you can still use on yourself, although extended duration will obviously kind of irritate your skin. This is probably the strongest solvent that you could use to try to remove stuff off of your skin. So what they're trying to do here is very similar to how nail polish works. A nail polish consists of a resin, colorants, and solvents. These solvents are usually ethyl acetate, which is very similar to methyl acetate, acetone, similar in structure, and you apply this film on your skin and it hardens. And we know that it doesn't wash off with soap and water. So you have to dissolve it with something that is similar to what it was dissolved in in the first place. So basically when you're using nail polish remover, you're re-dissolving the colorants and the resin that had set on your nails. That's what they're trying to do here. Unfortunately, acetone is probably not gonna be sufficient because you have a lot of stronger solvents that it was dissolved in initially. So any product you have, look up that product with SDS. There should be one there or the company should be able to provide one for you and that will provide first aid measures, that kind of thing in case 
something happens to where you get it on yourself, you inhale it, get it in your eyes. Although you may not intentionally put on your hair, if there's any accidental exposure to a product, that's how you can find some first aid information and what you should do if you are exposed to it. So as I said, she did have to cut out some hair, the acetone didn't seem to be working, and she actually had to go to this doctor in LA. He flew her out there, did this for her, and what he used was basically a Goo Gone material. It was a medical adhesive remover. He put some olive oil, I believe. He put aloe vera and a little bit of acetone. So I don't know exactly what this medical adhesive. In Goo Gone, for instance, they use petroleum distillates. So the reason why certain things dissolve certain things better has to do with the charge of the molecule. For instance, water is a polar molecule, meaning one end will have a stronger negative charge and the other end will have a stronger positive charge. Oil would be a non-polar example and oil and water don't dissolve to each other. Whatever is in the Goo Gone, um, if it is Goo Gone specifically, it's like a petroleum distillate, but its composition will better match that of the resin and that is going to help break down the resin. Now, from the video, it doesn't look like it just dissolved it completely. It did look like they had to kind of comb it through the hair to kind of help pull it off. It was supposed to be a 12 hour procedure to get this out of her hair, but this did help loosen its grip on her hair. So they were able to comb it out and fix her hair. I don't know what the long-term effects will be from this, but hopefully, hopefully she doesn't sustain too much damage. So a short coat would be whatever Gorilla Glue dissolved all of this into, that you would just put that on her hair, but a lot of these things are not safe for you to get on your skin, so that is not the responsible way to get this off. This is gonna bring us into my little PSA. So please do not use things that are not intended for cosmetics use as cosmetics. And this goes beyond just using like Gorilla Glue or household items on your face. This is also going to extend to using things that are for medical purposes, if it's not supposed to be for use on your hair, don't use it on your hair. If it's not supposed to be for use on your face, don't use it on your face. Try to stick with that kind of a mentality. You may be okay if you use these little secret hack kind of things, but it is better to use a product that has been determined to be safe for use in the manner that you were intending and using it, if that makes sense. Lots of good drugstore products out there. And so while you think that doesn't apply to you, I'm also going to urge you to please do not use food items for cosmetic purposes as well. A lot of people think that because it's natural that it's going to be better for you, but these could also still cause damage. For instance, Lemons are very acidic. You can ingest it, but that doesn't actually mean it's safe for your skin. It's very acidic. It can break down your skin barrier and cause irritation to your face. Same applies with baking soda. I mentioned these two because these are two things that people love to use and they're both at the end of the pH spectrum. That is very alkaline. So like I said, there's a lot of good drugstore products out there. So please try to use those before you turn to these DIY methods that you don't have a lot of control over. If you are new here and you like the information I put out in this video, please click the subscribe button down below. And for those new subscribers, as well as my old subscribers, please let me know down below what you thought of this whole situation. And with that, I will see you in my next video.